Welcome to another episode of A Soap Maker's Tale. I'm your host, Zakia Ringold of LiveSoapSchool.com. And this podcast is for makers and would-be makers alike. Listen in and get inspired with lessons learned building a handmade business. Hi, Zakia. I want to first say thank you for having me. It's truly an honor. My name is Tara Brown, and my company name is My Shy Bath and Body Treats. And my favorite product to make is soaps. I would say soaps, bath bombs, and bubble truffles, but more importantly, soap. So as the title of the podcast implies, this is all about a maker's tale. And every maker has a getting started story. So could you tell us? How did you get started with your handmade business? Well, yes, my tale is actually in layers. Um, I started uh, many years back, uh, probably around 2006, um, when I was in massage school, dipping and dabbing and, you know, making products actually for hair and then some skin, you know, for massage. But then it became uh, more official and a uh, um, hobby in 2014 um, when I had to make uh, products for my daughter and her, um, you know, adolescent, you know, acne problems and different things. And I had previously made soap and a whole regimen for myself. So then it spilled over to my daughter and also my son with their skin issues. So it was officially 2014, 2015 in that area. And then um, I progressed into soap making. And how I found my craft, like I said, was uh, uh, looking up, researching and doing things to make, to help heal my children's and I skin. And then of course, YouTube University (laughs) and um, then I got up the courage to actually make a uh, cold process soap because I was afraid of it at first. When you think back to that moment of it went from hobby to business or you already knew that it was going to be a business, how did you know that you were ready to start a business? Well, I kind of didn't know. Uh, everything happened backwards, actually. Like you said, it was a hobby at first. And it fell into a business by, um, I was kind of addicted. Like every little extra money I got, I was like, ooh, I could buy this. I could buy this and I could make this and make that. And then it became, you know, from me, from doing hair, my clients, I was giving them what I made to try. But then, you know, I had to replenish my supplies. So then I would go door to door to sell it. And so I was forced into that selling market. And then from there, you know, that's when I realized that it was time to uh, develop into a business. So we all kind of face some challenges. I know for me, my biggest thing was packaging. So what were some of the challenges you faced when you first got started as a business owner? Was it pricing? Was it selling the product? What, What was it? For you that would just had you scratching your head so yeah for me there were many challenges um one of the first ones was you know confidence getting myself to a place of confidence to uh be able to stand especially you know with the competitors or whatever like that and m- mostly pricing figuring out how to price it because from a customer standpoint and a maker standpoint, you know, I know I like bargains and different things like that. So I always thought of it as, you know, why would they buy my product at, you know, $8 a bar or whatever, Um, you know, different prices at different times, um, as opposed to, 
you know, getting 12 bars for three ninety nine or five dollars at the, you know, at the store on the commercial level. Then I had to, you know, break down and understand, you know, it's the quality of my product. And, you know, just getting to that confidence and, you know, knowing how to price it. And then the other biggest one is uh, tech, the, the, the technology behind building everything to the website. I really struggle with building a website. Um, and, you know, you helped me in, in a lot of ways in that shipping, trying to figure out those numbers for the proper shipping so that you wouldn't lose. And, you know, some packaging, but uh, more so pricing and um, tech tech uh, items. Uh, I think you just mentioned three of the areas that most business owners, doesn't matter if they're new or seasoned, experience. Confidence, pricing, and technology. Um, I think we all go back and forth with the confidence conversation, especially if you're trying to make a new product or introduce a new way of doing things. There, There's always that confidence. So I'm glad that you were able to overcome that. And then the technology, there's always something new. So I think um, getting a foundation with what it is that we want to use and then only adding those things that are necessary to the mix. Sometimes there's always, well, me, I can't say for everyone else, but for me, that shiny object syndrome There's always a learning curve with it, but I'm glad you stuck it out and I'm glad I was able to help with some of the technology stuff as well as that shipping. Um, The internet makes it really possible to ship beyond our borders internationally. And you mentioned something there in terms of not losing money because your flat rate shipping or your regional shipping doesn't necessarily apply when you are shipping your products overseas. And I learned that when I was shipping products to Canada, like they have to pay customs and duties and all of that. Um, And that needs to be really loud and clear for your customers. Um, And you also need to take into account how much it costs when you are presenting them with that checkout screen. So I'm really glad you mentioned those three areas. And those are pretty broad areas. What would you say were some of the things that you did to overcome those challenges? So what I did and still do, um, I have my moments, of course, and have had my moments. But I pushed through by, uh, again, trying to continue to believe in myself and believe in, you know, what the gift has been placed in my hand. And so, therefore, I would research, I ask questions, I ask sopers, other people who are experienced, you know, like yourself. And um, first of all, being patient with yourself and being patient with the process. Um, So I would, uh, you know, patiently, no matter how slow it was, like, again, using the website as an example, it took me six months to build that. I had to pay. (laughs) For a website that I wasn't actively using for um, six months, um, but I had to do it. Uh, you know, like I said, research, read, ask questions, um, and just keep trying, keep doing it. Even if you, I failed at times, it got frustrating. I would just pick up and keep going, and and that is even the case now. Like, there's so many things behind the scenes that are frustrating, but you know, got to keep going or, you know, find resources, you know, that that can help. And that's what I've done and continue to try to utilize. I think a lot of people can appreciate that. And it's that keep trying part. They say you fail 99 times, but then as long as you get up 100, it's not a failure. And so that keep trying and reaching out for resources or looking up things really helps you to keep going and get over those challenges. And then it's like, ah, I can finally breathe because, hey, it wasn't so bad once I've gotten over that particular challenge or roadblock that I was experiencing. 
So you've had those challenges. Now, what would you say is something that keeps you motivated in your business? I'm excited and motivated to keep going, even when things don't go as planned. Um, Because for one, I'm excited to see the end result um, of the product. Um, The end result is usually pretty, you know, uh, um, to see what it comes what it comes out to be even sometimes when you don't know it's a mystery or whatever as a creative you're always excited to create something beautiful so a lot of it is is the art of it the other part of it is the benefits the benefits um in the ingredients that i use i pick the top of the line ingredients that are most beneficial to people's skin um the whole idea of my uh, my goal is to create an in spa, in home spa experience. So you get that experience along with um, you know beneficial ingredients to your skin to help heal a problem. I, you know the fact that I can help with that that brings me joy. Being able to help, I think self-care is very important i know for me um i found myself a lot of times um you know when my children were small and you know different just life issues in different situations i find myself um my quick escape was the bathroom you know especially if you have a house full of people uh the bathroom is usually my escape and and talking to people and knowing you know different people women that's the same for them so just having an oasis me able to provide um tools and you know whether it's bath bombs or soaps or whatever those tools to help uh with people's self-care and their moment of getaway you know sort of like cow gone take me away is my shy take me away so knowing that I can help with that, the excitement of, you know, making and helping somebody feel good in their self-care journey and, and you know, get through that moment, those tough moments. So, and then I know that um, I wasn't imparted this gift for nothing because I would have never have guessed in a million years <laughs> sounds cliche but I would have never guessed that I would be making soap I didn't even realize you could make soap I thought it was you know all machine based or whatever so um I was a cosmetologist I started as an artist drawing but I would never have saw this coming so I don't think it was given to me for nothing so I I kind of feel obligated to keep going at least a little longer, you know, so that's what motivates me most importantly, the art of it, um, the joy of it is fun, you know, sometimes I'm I'm just in my element creating and the end result of helping people. I know all about that bathroom escape and I know a lot of women and mamas in particular can um, relate to that in particular. So you creating those products for them to kind of have that Zen moment while they are in the bathroom. And even though the kids may still come knocking, um, you think you have your moments of privacy, but they find you. But you creating like an in-home spa experience is really, really exciting. So um even though we're talking about those challenges and some of those experiences, what would you say is something that you look forward to when you wake up in the morning or something about running your business as a business owner, whether that just be you personally or even interacting with your customers? So the best experience for me is first having the flexibility and uh, ability to call my own shots, to do things 
when I choose to, even though you're still not really, you're still on a schedule, but it's still for you. My hard work is for me and my family and my, um, uh, you know, for the, the future of my family, um, building toward my own future. Uh, the next thing is um, interacting with the customers, you know, going to it when I do go to pop ups and events and getting out there and talking to other people, meeting new people, um, whether it's fellow soapers or, you know, exploring, being exposed to uh, different creative opportunities and just seeing other things. And as I stated before, the beauty, the the beauty of the art, the art of this whole the type of business that I am in. Um, but most yeah, the customers, the flexibility, and then the reviews, getting the positive. You know, not all are, but for me, uh, gratefully, most have been um, positive feedback, and you know, knowing that. The goal that I have set out to to do, as far as helping people, um, I have in many ways, and I've even learned ways that like certain soaps or products have helped people in different ways that I didn't even think of. It just because of the the ingredients in a product, you know, it worked out. Like for one, just give an example. Somebody said my black soap help. Uh, they no longer got blackheads on their back. So I didn't even think about that, you know. So, yes, yeah, the customers and, you know, meeting new people and, you know, seeing different avenues or whatever and the flexibility and, you know, working hard at your pace on your time, even if that means all day, every day, but you're working hard for yourself and for your family and the future of your family and, and the next generation. So if you think back again to when you first got started or just your lessons learned, what is one piece of advice you have for newbies? Like if you had a crystal ball and it gave you the opportunity to say, if I only knew then what I know now, this is what I would have done differently or what I would have done more of. What is that advice that you would have for a newbie thinking of starting their own handmade business? So what I would advise newbies to do is to first uh, believe in yourself, believe in what you're doing, be patient with yourself, trust the process. Um, don't try to start so big and with so many products all at once at first. Um, we all try that in uh you know get overwhelmed or whatever but you know pace yourself start small don't go crazy with um you know different ingredients and and e even with packaging um don't exceed your budget and go crazy first have a budget because as you heard earlier i started backwards so i would say uh get more organized plan out everything, you know, um, and have your budget in place. And if you can get all the knowledge that you can through resources, you know, asking questions or whatever like that. Um, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to, to fail. Um, I'm still not exactly where I would like to be. So I'm still a work in prog progress. So I say all that to say, don't be afraid to, um, you know, take advice or get to a place where you can't take advice. So um, be patient with yourself and practice, practice, practice. Um, again, give an example, bath bombs, they are very testy, extremely testy. I have tried and failed so many times with them in the beginning like even in one night I have thrown out three to five batches 
trying to make one. Um, but I was determined. I was determined that I wanted to get this and that I was going to get it. So I kept, you know, th- throwing it away and starting over, throwing it away and starting over. So I say all that to say is don't be afraid to make those mistakes. And, you know, if you're passionate about it, yes, keep going, start over, rest if you must a moment, but keep going and you'll, you'll get it. But most importantly, have a plan. I didn't quite have a plan. And so I'm not exactly where I should or I ain't going to say should be because everything is perfect timing, but um, where I could be. So, yeah. And best of luck. Oh, the good old plan. Yeah, a lot of us fall into it by accident, but I think once you realize it's going to be a business, take a moment to pause and really plan out what is that budget? What are those products? And really um, keeping it small and keeping it simple should be two things that most new people start to consider because it can be really exciting to do all the things and have all the scents and all of the different products. But if you are running it as a business, all of those things have to pay for themselves in order for it to be sustainable. So there's that starting capital, but that ongoing capital becomes very important. So I'm glad you reminded us to plan. And even if we fall into it by accident, once we know, hey, this is going to be a business, pause, reflect, and plan. Well, that's pretty much it for the interview, but I always like to leave room for anything that I may not have asked. So is there anything that you would want to share with would-be makers or current makers in terms of starting or growing their handmade business? So yes, I would also like to share with the newbies. um, Don't be afraid or feel a way that the... um, the business is saturated, you know, yes, you have many people doing the same thing, but don't feel um, like you can't succeed or get to a level you wish to get to because somebody else is doing it. Um, We all have our own unique uniqueness about what we're, you know, what we do. So keep that in mind and don't get discouraged because it's going to be moments, you know, that would discourage you but don't let don't be defeated by that um just keep pressing through and as i said before you know stay confident in yourself trust the process and and just keep keep going what they say slow and steady wins the race so it's not going to be an overnight overnight success some have been lucky but for the most part it is not overnight and know that and just you know just keep going and and striving and you'll get there thanks tara slow and steady wins the race there is no such thing as an overnight success and there's no elevator you have to take the stairs to where you want to be. I I really appreciate you taking the time to do this podcast interview and to share your own experiences as well as your words of wisdom. Now, how can people find you? What's your website? Do you hang out on social media? Please let us know. My pleasure. And thanks again for having me. This was a really good interview. Um, I can be reached uh, my website is actually myshy, m y s h a i, bath and body treats dot com. Again, that's myshy bath and body treats dot com. And on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, it's at myshy bath and body treats. Again, the website is myshy. M Y S H A I Bath B A T H 
and a n d body b o d y treats t r e a t s dot com. I know y'all is long, but that's another story. <laughs> but uh, I wish everyone luck um, in their journey, business journey, whether it's a newbie or you're scaling up. And thanks again, everyone. Well, that's it for this week's episode of A Maker's Tale. A special thank you goes out to Tara of My Shy Bath and Body Treats. Her website and links to her social media will all be listed on the show notes of the podcast. And I hope that you were able to take away some really, really pivotal things. Some things I heard was the importance of research, but most importantly, your confidence and belief in yourself as you're starting out and as you're continuing in your business. There's always going to be a roadblock or a challenge, but if you have that mindset of embracing it as a gift, this is a gift that you have been given and it's something that you're really passionate about and something that you want to do, as Tara shared, that constant belief in herself and continuing to keep going, even though it felt a little difficult at times, that may just be the spark that you need to give it one more try and keep going. I'm your host, Zakia Ringold of LiveSoapSchool.com. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, go out and create something amazing. I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.